Clappers and champagne. But in Dallas, on the other side of the tracks, something else was brewing. In a place called Deep Ellum, it was the golden age of blues. And what would happen on street corners and in dance halls would influence the music scene in America forever. Gary Kogel tonight has that story. If there was one musician who defined Texas blues for America, it was Stevie Ray Vaughan. But he wasn't the first native bluesman to captivate the masses. Before Stevie Ray, there were electric guitarsmen like T-Bone Walker, songsters like Lead Belly, and legends like Blind Lemon Jefferson. Their skills were honed, styles crafted, alongside the rails that rolled in from Houston and onto a street called Elm in the shadows of downtown Dallas. The area around this bustling crossroads was known as Deep Elm, a colloquial term agreed upon by the Eastern Europeans and the African Americans who lived and worked here. Don't know what to do. Today, Deep Elm is a cross between a theme park and Bohemia, a collection of bars, art stores, and specialty shops. But for generations, Deep Elm was thriving, much like Harlem in New York, Beale Street in Memphis. When you go down on Deep Ellum, just to have a little fun, better have your $15 when that policeman comes. Oh, sweet mama, daddy's got them Deep Ellum blues. In its heyday in the 20s, Deep Ellum was the place you came to drink, party, gamble, or shop. Here you could buy a suit or dance all night. The area had kind of a dual identity, says Jay Brakefield, who's co-authoring a book on Deep Ellum. Yeah, was um, there a day Deep Ellum and, and a night Deep Ellum? Were there... Yeah, I think to some extent that's true. Um, a lot of those businesses would stay open pretty late by today's standards, but even so, I think... I think, the, yeah, you had people that would go down there to shop, but they'd clear out before nightfall because that was when the that was when people came down more for socializing and having a good time. So a lot of money, a lot of money changed hands around here. Yeah, yeah, it was a business district, you know. It, it was a commercial district. You didn't really have people living here so much, but this was primarily an area for business of various kinds. And uh, it was it was busy. I mean, for people, a lot of people. When I've asked people, what was it like to be in Deep Ellum in its heyday? They said on Saturday you could hardly even walk down the street. It was so busy. It was thronged with people. This was one of the few places in Dallas where blacks and whites mixed together. The sons and daughters of immigrants did business with the sons and daughters of former slaves. You could see a tailor about clothes or talk to a pawnbroker about money. 60% uh, of our trade was black in those days. We got mostly working class. We got some, a whole lot of white country people, farmers and people that didn't have a whole lot of money. And we were real competitive. We tried to compete, and everybody tried to have the best value for the money. But it was the music that brought Deep Ellum fame, jazz, swing, and of course, blues. The best either started in Dallas or played through it. Well, it was real good, real good, because Buster Smith, Leo Phillips, like I said, and uh, Fathead and all them, they had a good thing. And this was a good town for, for, for entertaining. You would get together that night, the white musicians, the black musicians, all playing, some of them, the white musicians playing the Gunner Hotel, you couldn't play there. The others playing out here at these different places. Now listen to me closely. All right, but when they got to when they when they got through playing, they'd all meet down here at the Froggy Bottom, Amen. whites and blacks and all <laughs> white women and all and blacks and all get they just mix up. Going but just soon as daylight broke, 
<laughs> Everybody scrammed. It was, it was like, like a zoo down through here. It was just packed. All street was full. And people just walking and looking. These uh, T-Bone Walkers were down on L playing guitar outside. Blind Lemon Jefferson also played on street corners in Dallas for nickels and dimes. He was a prolific recording artist and the most influential blues man from Deep Ellum. His national fame came after his move to Chicago. I got the blues so bad, and I my His record sold great in the north. In Dallas, he plays at the corner of Elm and Central with a tin cup strung onto his guitar. Alan Govner wrote one book on the blues and is co-authoring another on Deep Ellum. Would he play all day long? There are different stories that he would find his way up the tracks, sing three or four, maybe five hours. There were some stories about Blind Lemon that he was also a bootlegger. Well, a lot of the performers that, that lived in Dallas, and, and or at least performed in Dallas, and even in Deep Ellum, they looked pretty painful lines. I mean, they sang the blues. Were they painful inside? I think so. I think they were generally people who were brought up dirt poor, came from sharecropper farms that failed, that came to Dallas looking for work, looking to be discovered, hoping to get a recording contract, hoping to make a little bit better out of their lives. I think there was a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, and I think the music was in part about that, but also it was a celebration of life and freedom and hope and joy sex. Musicians say in Deep Ellum, different blues styles converged, and from that was born a different sound. Brian Hashbrown Calloway has been playing the blues for over 20 years. Now I want to talk to you about Texas blues a little bit. Sure. Does it have its own unique sound? Do people know uh, what Texas blues is? Yes, uh, actually, Texas blues compromises a lots of different sounds. Uh, the beginning of Texas blues probably started like right in this area we're in right now, Deep Ellum. So a lot of country blues would have more of a seventh chord sound, say like a... When uh, T-Bone in, in uh, that style, they tried to uh, bring it up town a little bit. Many of the songs written by Deep Ellum musicians are still being sung. One of Curly Barefoot Miller's favorites is Stormy Monday, a T-Bone Walker tune. This 91-year-old bluesman started in New Orleans, but is ending his career in Dallas. As a younger man, he sang in Deep Ellum, and it's in Deep Ellum he's singing tonight. When you get out here in this music thing, and you love it, that's it. You can't get away from it. I don't care what you do. For Barefoot Miller, the sound of the blues plays on, as it does in Deep Ellum. Urban pioneers and progress may have forever changed the character of the area, but the music and the memories remain. Great look at him <laughs> and history, Gary. Did, did many of the artists record in Dallas? Oh, it's a fun story looking at that. Yes, they did, and Robert Johnson's probably the most famous of the blues to record here. And then, you know, they did a lot of Texas Swing. Bob Wills, the famous Bob Wills, doing the Texas Swing. But, you know, I, I, look at, I look at the story, and I think of all the fun and all the stories and all the faces and all the odd names like Hash Brown that are down there. And, and they, they lived and they sang the blues. And speaking of the blues, whatever happened to that real 
penetrating blue scene well, in detail. I think the depression kind of wiped it all out. You know, the depression, and then when they started building back in the 40s, you know, they, they knocked out the railroad tracks, and they knocked out some of the buildings, and they built Central Expressway. So Deep Ellum, the original Deep Ellum, is really only a, a couple blocks of that left. But, you know, back then, they, they came out of the cafes, and they sang on the street, and they sang for change. And it was real. Great story. Thank you very much, Gary. And we'll be right back.